everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla Stukins. This is my book review channel. Today I'm going to be reading or reviewing Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So I'd already read his first two books and my dad told me this third book was coming out and I was really excited to read it. So keep in mind this review is going to be spoiler filled. So if you have not read the book, I would recommend not watching this video. I've There are ample reviews that I have found that are unspoilered so if you want to go check those out maybe I'll link a few in the bottom if you want to check those out but these this will be spoilers so I'll be talking about the end talking about particularly you know just just spoilers you know so if you haven't read the book or if you don't want to know anything about it going in other than what it tells you I recommend not watching this video anyway so if you've read this book you know the story the whole shtick it's Ryland Grace sole survivor on this trip to Mar or trip to that's the Martian this trip to save Earth right but he loses his memory so let's just go ahead and dive right into this video so one thing I really like that's kind of become to, something to be expected in Andy Weir's books is the little uh diagrams that we get at the beginning in the first two books it was like a map of either you know Mars or the Artemis city this one, sorry, we get a cute little diagram of the spaceship he's on, as well as like, I don't know, centrifuge and that thing. I don't know. It's cool to like when he's men mentioning places to like look at where it's at. I just like little diagrams. So let's go ahead and get right into our main character because I think with Andy Weir's books, the main characters are sometimes the strongest points. That and the science. We'll get into that next. But Dr. Ryland Grace is absolutely hilarious. I love the whole concept that he has this monumental task to achieve to save the entirety of the human race and he doesn't even remember it. And he's also, he knows that he's not getting off this ship no matter what, so he has to save humanity and not get to live in that world that he's saving. I love the beginning sequence of Grace trying to figure out where he's at, figure out what's going on, figure out who he is, but slowly just slowly getting his memories back he uses logic to figure out kind of who he is and where he's at like for instance because he uses imperial units or like feet and miles and stuff that means he's probably either american english or liberian liberian sorry and you know even though he can't remember his own name he remembers all this scientific stuff which we find out later that that was what the amnesia was programmed to do but i just think it's really cool as we're slowly because as we're figuring, as in a normal book, as you're figuring out more about a character, you kind of slip it in like that. But in this book, when we're figuring out more about the character, the character is also figuring out more about himself, which I thought was really cool. And it was cool to see things kind of like trigger back his memory. Like when he starts bleeding and he sees a trickle of blood on the floor, the thin red line it reminds him of an email that he previously sent. They're just those little things that'll trigger his memory and he'll start flashback sequences that kind of lead up to how he got on the ship. With this memory loss, it's also really sad to see two dead crewmates that obviously he cared about and who he knew for a while and he he even before he knows that he knows these people, he's crying because his conscious brain or his subconscious recognizes them and he's crying. You know, it's just a super sad that he doesn't know anybody anymore and but he knows he cared about them. It's just really sad. I also thought was cool. There's a lot of things I think is cool about this character, um, but he's a science teacher having to save the world. It's kind of like how in The Martian, Mark Watney was a botanist having to save the world. You know, it's just very, it's very cool. And they're both really quirky. He's good at writing quirky, funny. Andy Weir, by the way, is good at writing quirky, funny, kind of standoffish, but really funny characters. And of course, Rylan Grace, it used to be in a more professional science gig, but right now he's just a science teacher. And it's really funny that a science teacher is just going to space. Speaking of how Rylan used to be in a more professional science job, one of the current recurring themes of Rylan is that he was a coward and he wasn't, anytime something got hard, he would back away or he would give up you know, with his job or, you know, with succeeding or just anything like this. And even, you know, figure out in the end when he's given the opportunity or 
Given the choice to either go up to space and save everyone or save his own self and stay, he chose to stay. Again, being a coward, you know, but we'll get to how that pays off in the end and also what Strat did at the end. But I don't know. I just love that that's this character. He gets, you know, he gets a second chance when he wakes up with amnesia and doesn't know any of this. He just assumes, oh, I must have been brave. And so from there on out, he is brave. You know, he is willing, he's, he accepts that he is going to sacrifice himself for his people. He knows that that's what he has to do. And then when he remembers that it wasn't his choice, he's angry, but he's like, I still got to do what I got to do. And then when he's given the choice at the very, very end of the book to either save Rocky and die or go home and save himself, he chooses to save Rocky. Again, he's not, a, I mean, he's not a coward, you know what I mean? He chooses the brave option. The You know what I'm saying? Just a great character development that I really appreciated and I loved it. It just, Ryland was such a real and honest character while also being likable, you know what I'm saying? All of his faults, you understood, you know what I mean? Like, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I'd risk my life for everyone else's, but actually doing it, it are two different things, you know what I'm saying? And also, he's, I know I've said this a bunch, but he's hilarious. That scene where the engines cut off and he's kind of like flailing around and freaking out and all the different banter he has with Rocky is really funny. He's, to me, I even found him more funny than Mark Watney in The Martian, which was surprising to me. It was just, I don't know. I don't know. He's just funny, and I really enjoyed the book because of that. Also, he rarely cusses in this book, which I know is like, oh my gosh, but he says, oh my gosh, instead of like, you know what I'm saying? And he's not particularly religious, I don't think, but he, probably because he, you know, teaches kids, he doesn't want to cuss as much, which is, so, it just, I, I don't know, which is a cool little detail that I enjoy um but when he does cuss it's funny like first time he cusses he's like holy and he says i don't know if it's f or s but you know what i'm saying it's just funny just funny all right so now we're going to talk a little bit about the build-up and the flashback sequences as a whole i love that the timeline isn't linear that it does flashback you see two different time periods rylan on the ship trying to stop the astrophage and then it cuts back to him getting recruited and him you know, just all this stuff, the story of how he got on the ship. I almost enjoyed the build-up more than that story on the ship a little bit. Aside from the scenes with Rocky, those were hilarious, which I know is a majority of it, but I don't know. I enjoyed the behind the scenes instead of like how I'm, I hate to always compare it to The Martian, but like I am, sorry, it's not a spoiler, but like all the scenes in The Martian that were on Earth Mark Watney wasn't there, you know, it's just the NASA team. And I didn't enjoy it as much as this one where we got to see our main character at a point before um, the time was. We got to have context for what his character was like before the amnesia to see how it was different from his character after the amnesia, which I thought was really suiting. I thought it was cool just to see the little subtle differences, you know, from watching Ryland in the lab, from all the hijinks and kind of scenarios that led him to be standing in front of a group of people from all over the world, scientists, smart people that were all looking to him for answers up until, you know, Strat betraying him and making him get on the ship against his will. It was just all very rewarding and it was very, I don't know, it was, I loved it. And like waiting and waiting and waiting until we, because majority of the book up until like page 300 or something, we don't know, Ryland still hasn't made the decision to get on the boat or get on the spaceship. And he doesn't. He never makes a decision, you know what I'm saying? He gets forced. But you're waiting the entire time to figure out, how did he get on the ship? People after people are assigned to, this sh to get on the spaceship, and he still hasn't got on it yet. And it's like, we know something has to happen to get him on the ship. So when it finally happened, and the blow-up happened, and then he got on, I don't know, it was just rewarding, fulfilling. And it was, it was really chilling to watch Ryland planning the how the Hail Mary is going to work, and experimenting with astrophage not yet knowing that he was going to be on that ship and dealing with it firsthand it was just you know what I'm saying that's just a great build-up and the cutbacks I mean everyone experiences this always happen at the worst time it's like when you're watching a tv show and something big happens and the commercial starts or the tv ends you're like come on you know what I mean like we just discovered alien life exists and we cut to the past it is weird knows how to build tension and keep it it's really good and my favorite flashback scene I think that there was, was the scene where 
Ryland is in his classroom talking to his kids and they're like, what is going to happen? And he has to explain to them what is going to happen to them. And he, he's, think, he's thinking to himself, you know, most of these kids are going to be dead if no one does anything. You know, they're going to, they're probably going to starve. And to them, you know, he even says this, the words that he's saying are just that, they're words. They don't understand the weight of them yet. You know, they don't understand the gravity of it, pun intended. And, you know, I'm just going to read a little bit from it, but this is the scene where he's talking about, you know, the, the livestock, the animals are going to die. And one of the kids kind of freaks out and says, the animals are going to die? He says, human suffering is often an abstract concept to kids, but animal suffering is something else entirely. You know what I'm saying? They only realize the weight of it when it's talking about animals. And then he has this this little part where he's talking, he's thinking to himself about what's going to happen. He says, 30 years. I looked at their little faces. In 30 years, they'd all be in their 40s. They would bear the brunt of it all, and it wouldn't be easy. These kids were going to grow up in an idyllic world and be thrown into an apocalyptic nightmare. They were the generation that would experience the sixth extinction event. I feel the cramp in the pit of my stomach. I was looking out at a room full of children, happy children, and there was a good chance some of them would literally die of starvation. It's just, uh, just so crazy to think about that half of the population, like Thanos, Half of the population would be dead because of the sun. Scary, you know what I'm saying? Terrifying. Which is why, again, why I thought, of course he chose to be on the spaceship to save his kids. That's, he went, did the whole thing thinking he chose to do this and you find out he didn't choose. It's just a really good plot twist. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Maybe I'm saying we'll talk about these things later on. If I don't, fully talk about them all later. I'm so sorry. Sorry. I don't have to tell you. I won't know until I'm editing and then I'm like, crap. Sorry. I also love, this is supposed to be somewhere else, but I love how, like the Martian, all of the space stations have to work together. You know, you have people from all different countries, even though, you know, the space race, the space competition is such a big competition. Everyone wants to go to the moon first, go to the thing, go to this place first. You know what I'm saying? go to space first and they're working together because they know the we feel is they know it's so pressing you know what i'm saying it is it's a scary world out there but i also love how later on strat says you know it's not just going to be people starving you know there's that line where she's like as soon as the food gets less people are going to start wars over food countries are going to go to war because they want food there's this line where she's like i listened to the audiobook and it was on audible and it was really powerful but she's like, people make up excuses about religion or this, that, this, that, the other, why they go to war. But it always is about food. You know what I mean? It was always because people are hungry and they need to feed their people. So they go to war. You know what I'm saying? It's just chilling how pressing this issue is. It's scary. Starvation is scary, especially on this scale. Billions of people. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the science. I love the science, especially in this book, because I knew about it. You know, I love space. And like relativity and I took calculus in high school and I actually really enjoyed learning about like velocity and acceleration and like all those equations and like f prime you know what I'm saying like changing velocity to acceleration and back and forth that kind of stuff I loved it and I loved reading about it because you know people I always thought when am I ever going to use this and I haven't up until this point but it was nice to know a little bit about it I also really love learning about two things that are obviously not don't exist in our world that are fake in our world like rocky species and astrophage because even though it wasn't real I enjoyed learning about their biology and how they operate and what they do and other things about them it was interesting to me and time relativity is always something that intrigues me I mean you could it's like time travel he goes to space Ryland and it's 26 years passes on earth but for him it's like what 10 years maybe or like I don't know how many years it takes to go back and forth He's on this, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's like it's time travel. Cause now you get to live, you just see the earth for more years than you really would have been able to, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you age slower and experience less time than people on earth. It's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Rocky and his relationship with Ryland. So the thing I really loved about Rocky is like, I've, as I said, I've read both the other books and I won't spoil anything, but this is the strongest side character I've seen in any of his books 
First of all, Rocky's a literal alien. Like, we already had an alien in the book. Astrophage is technically an alien, but it wasn't an intelligent life force. You know, Rocky can talk and can speak and can breathe. You know what I'm saying? He's an alien. And, you know, seeing Ryland have to think like an alien and seeing Rocky and Ryland learning about each other's language and culture and ways of life, you know what I'm saying? Were very interesting. They're some of my favorite parts of the book. Like, there's a line in the book where Ryland's basically like, we've learned that culture is something that you just don't fight each other on. You, you respect no matter what. Like, Rocky begging Ryland to watch each other sleep, and they do that every time so that Ro Rocky feels safe, you know? And then R Rocky always says, no, you, you, you name that. Earth culture rule. You, you found that, you name it. You know what I'm saying? In his, in his sing-songy voice, you know what I'm saying? But, I don't know. It's just cool that they, to find more about this, again, fake culture, but to learn about it. It's just cool. And to see Rocky and Rylan kind of bicker, it's very funny. There's a lot of scenes where Rocky's like, you stupid human, you, you space blob. Or like that scene where, um, Rylan's like, you know, Rocky, you look like a spider in my world. You look like a spider. And Rocky's like, good. I look like a scary space monster. You look like a blob. You know what I'm saying? It just, their bickering is really funny. And it's, I don't know, they become actual friends, which is really beautiful. I don't know. It's really cool. And I also love that they're both equally surprised by each other's culture. You know, to us, Rocky is an alien, but to, to Rocky, humans are the alien. I don't know, it's just, it just so cool to see. You know, they're so, Rocky and Rylan are very similar. They're both tasked with saving their worlds. They're both the sole survivor on their ship. And I don't know, it's just, it's just cool to see how similar they are and how they connect because of that. You know, even Rylan says that. I remember a lot of quotes, well, quotes, because um, I was listening to the audiobook. But, you know, Rylan says you're not alone anymore. None of us are. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It's cute. I like their friendship. And, you know, Rocky is so wholesome. And he's hilarious, too. But wholesome. And the, when he, they're finally going to be fr um, free and they're eating, they're about to split ways and they're eating food and, um, or Rylan eating food. Rocky doesn't like to eat food in front of people. But when Rocky's wearing his, like, celebration getup and Rylan's kind of like, what? that and Rocky's like this is my celebration outfit and he's just like really happy and they both have the little wave little jazz hand to talk to people it's just I don't know it's a really cute book but Rocky sacrificing himself for Ryland he didn't die but like him knowing that he probably would to save Ryland it's just sweet because you know Ryland pays him back later on it's just he was willing to die for this guy he just met because he was a friend I don't know they just found a community in each other. It was cool. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Strat. She, so she, I loved her character growing the entire time. She was like this bad booty girl who didn't take crap from anyone. She was like, yeah, what are you gonna do about it? You can't arrest me. I've got the Senate on my side. You can't arrest. I do what I want. Leave me alone. I do what I want. I'm punk rock. You know what I'm saying? So the banter between Strat and Rylan is really funny. You know, she's, they kind of get each other's brains. They don't respect each other. She even says that. I don't, I don't respect you, but I don't know. It's just cool to see their growth. And you know, a lot of the book, Strat has to be the one to make the hard decision. She has to be the one to kind of, you know, she has to grapple with morality. You know, she doesn't have morals really. She says, you know, she just, ha she has to be the one to make the bad the hard decisions to get humanity safe. You know, she was willing to be hated by everyone to save the world. In that way, she kind of reminds me of Jack Bauer. She was willing to go to jail to save everyone, but Jack Bauer wasn't a bad guy. Maybe he, mm, he did some sketchy, you know what I'm saying? He did some bad things to save the world. Anyway, she watched that show at 24. Anyways, you know what I'm saying though? And you know what she did to Ryland, forcing him on the plane or the ship was not okay. It was really bad. Obviously, very terrible, but, like, without that, we wouldn't have a book. And I'd like to say it was necessary, you know, but how would we know? She did what she thought was best, and that is terrible. We never figure out what happens to her, you know what I'm saying? We never figure out if she survives or what she's doing or if she goes to jail because Rylan never goes back to Earth that we see, you know what I mean? 
it's just like what the heck but I love the line where he's like go to H-E double hockey sticks and he she's like oh I will trust me we all will you guys are going to Ter Tau Seti we are going to H-E double hockey sticks you know what I'm it just she knows she knows she knows how messed up she is but she's doing it to save everyone which I respect I guess but it's like really dark really dark all right so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the ending so we don't find out that rylan is on the spaceship or i guess we, we know he's on the spaceship we don't see what makes him go on the spaceship until page 385 and and i absolutely love the twist that rylan didn't even want to be on the ship because again we spend the whole thing the whole book thinking he wanted to go for his kids and to save the world and like how would he be on the ship if he didn't want to and then she makes him and it's just a, such a good twist where they're like we didn't we're not asking you're going on the ship I'm sorry and they like kidnap him basically and force him on the spaceship and erase his memories so he's not so when he dies he's not going to remember anything that he didn't even want to go that is just so dark they're like we can't take the risk so they erase his memories and you know what's so sad about it is that Rylan post amnesia thinks he was brave enough to do it and so when he figures out he wasn't he's like holy crap I'm a coward you know what I mean he's it's really sad I think he cries maybe I can't remember he cries a lot during the book which like me too I'm not trying to shame him same I would be crying the entire time obviously but it's just so sad because Ryland pre-amnesia never accepted his death but Ryland post-amnesia did you know it's just super sad but he got a second chance I guess and now he's content living on planet arid with his best friend Rocky and all the little kids and Every time there was a problem where Rocky or Rylan was like, there's no way I'm going to survive. I'm going to die, Rocky. I don't know what to tell you. Rocky was like, you idiot. Think, stupid human. Let me help you. This is like, we can solve it easily. Just come to my planet and we'll fix it or I'll give you the astrophage. It's just, I don't know. It's really cool to see him have hope again every time that he thinks he's going to die. It's just really sweet to see how they work together and how they problem solve together. And, and they try to work out a way to get both of them home no matter what so that both of them can save their people and you think you know Rocky needs to get home to save them save his people because he doesn't have like the transport ships like Rylan does to go save his people he needs to get Rocky home you know what I'm saying which is just it's really sad I don't know I don't know we need to get Rocky home and we think he's dead like twice and then he survives so we already talked a little bit about the scene where Rocky or Rylan chooses sorry there's both our names Rylan chooses to go save Rocky but what really was so sad about it is that Rocky, as soon as he hears his friend, he's like, my friend, you're here, you're here. You know what I'm saying? You're here to save me. And then he realizes what that means, that Robin's probably going to die and he won't accept it. He's like, you are my friend. You are not going to die. I will not let you die. I'm not accepting that. And it's just so sad that we think he's actually going to die. At this point, we've accepted that he's going to make a decision. And they kind of made us think he didn't choose Rocky because in the book he's like okay I made my decision this is Ryland made my decision sorry Rocky that makes it seem like he chose not to go back for Rocky and then he does so I was like oh my gosh he chose himself and then he was like I'm going to see Rocky now and I was like what I was confused okay but like he wouldn't save Rocky it's, it's all fine it's fine it's, it's okay love that choice though that he finally he I mean he survived so he didn't sacrifice himself but he essentially did he thought he was going to die if he wanted to go save Rocky but he did anyway because he has a friend now and I love at the end that Rylan is still doing what he loves he's still a teacher he's teaching them science you know all the little Iridian kids and I just it's just a, such a powerful ending where he's sitting in class and he's at the piano playing with the piano so he can teach these kids in the best way that they know how so they don't have to learn English they can just speak in their own language and he's like, and I asked them a question and 12 kids raise their claws I just really powerful it's cute and you know Rocky says my my mate has probably moved on by now and he named a planet after his mate you know it's just cool I don't know if Adrian is a girl or boy but it's just I don't know it's just cool that they both got to be happy in the best way possible and I, I know a part of Rylan thought he would never make it home and he didn't go back to earth but he still gets to live you know it's just in a way that he didn't think was going to happen he's living on a whole nother alien planet which is so cool and they built up a little machine not machine but like a little place where you can stay enclosed and not it breathing the wrong air I don't know it's just really cool and he has a chance to go back to earth if he wants to to see what 
ended up with the Earth, but right now he's content with his best friend, you know, staying on this planet full of a bunch of different people that he's now met and a bunch of different kids he can teach. Because if he goes back to Earth, I think he's, ex you know, all of his kids are going to be older and the world's not going to be what he expects. And I think it, part of him might be disappointed. And I think part of him still too scared to go back and to see what the world is left of him. But I don't know. It's just, it was a really satisfying ending for me. Not the ending that I thought would happen. I thought he'd either die or go back to Earth. And he did neither. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's really cool. And, you know, Rocky even says, I hope you don't leave. And then he, he calls him an old man. He's like, come on, old man, or something. It's just, they're back, right back. They're always been bickering. You know what I'm saying? And Rylan is going to die before Rocky does. Rock, Rocky's going to outlive him by hundreds of years, you know, multiple centuries. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe like nine. I don't know. You know, he's going to live outlive him by a lot. They live, be like 400 years old is what he said. Or maybe 600. I can't remember. And it's going to not end. I mean, it's just, he's going to die. They're both going to die someday, but for right now, they're just living together. And living, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. I love it. And everyone's happy, and he's a teacher, and Rocky's doing what he loves, and he's the savior of his people. And all these people are content, and the kids are fine, and they're fed, and they're happy. I don't know. It's just really cool. I love it. And all the scientists are working together to help Rylan. It was a really good ending. I loved it. I don't know. I loved this book. So I was going to save this for another video. But I think I'm just going to do it here. Let me know if you want a little bit more of a detailed ranking of all three of Andy Weir's books. Oops, sorry, I almost ripped that book. But I'm just going to do a little ranking of all three since I'm done with my review. Um, So if you haven't read all three, skip this part, log off right now. Because I'm not going to be spoiling a lot, but I'm just going to be talking a little bit about my ranking. So the first one is Project... Hail Mary. I love this book. I don't know why. I loved it. You just had a whole review about why I loved it. Strong characters. Absolutely loved it. Second is, of course, The Martian. Maybe you don't have to skip off. You've already, you're probably already gone, though. I'm not going to talk too much. But, like, The Martian, strong character. Loved it. The first book, awesome. Loved it. And then the third one is Project Artemis. Or, not Project Artemis. Artemis. I have a review on this book. I review on both these books. If you want to go check them out, they're in the same review. I'll link it up. But I don't know. That's, that's my ranking if you cared. All right. Um, yeah. So see you later. Um, just for my little schedule. Um, next Monday, the... Or sorry, next Wednesday, the 19th, I'm going to be doing a review of... Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. He's a YouTuber, a booktuber. I got his new book. It's 120 pages. That's what I'm going to be reviewing on Wednesday. And then the next Saturday on the 22nd, I think. 22nd. I'm going to be ranking or like just mentioning and talking a little bit about my favorite booktubers. So if you want to check those out, those will be coming out at 2 p.m. Central Time, whatever time this video came out those days. All right, so I'll see you then. If you show back up, make sure to subscribe, like, post notifications, comment if you like this review, if you liked what I had to say. These are these are fun to do. I enjoy these. I am a big book nerd. They're really fun to do. If you want to see my journey about talking about books, you can subscribe. I do a lot of fantasy or horror. My favorite genre is like thrillers or horror or like crime solving books. So I read a lot of those. Yeah, if you want to check those out or if you want to subscribe, turn my post notifications on for when I, I try to do a book review every Wednesday. I'm a little bit off right now because I was, I didn't read a book in time, but I try to do a book review every Wednesday. And then the Saturday is a miscellaneous video, like a ranking or a pretty much it's been a ranking you know what I'm saying or just another video about books I want to read or this that or the other so one video week is a dedicated book review and then the other one is another one you know what I'm saying okay all right bye I love you I'll see you later